welcome everybody to FACT exhibition and GPCCI's, uh, I think this is the fourth webinar on uh, the 3P Pakistan uh, saga, as we can call it. And today, uh, FACT exhibitions, as you know, is the leading exhibition and conference organizing company in Pakistan. It specializes in trade shows and has 25 industrial sectors. It's a it covers and it is a UFI internationally approved event organizing company. Uh, in the event of the COVID pandemic, the best way we can reach out to the world is through these webinars. And it's uh, an honor to have today's webinar. We have two very eminent speakers on the plastic and uh, printing packaging industry. Uh, there's Flavio from, Germ uh, from Italy and yes, Dominique from Germany. Uh, before, uh, gentlemen, who would like to go first? Uh, Flavio. Okay, <laughs> Flavio. Always at, Flavio our missions are uh, always at the end of the process, not at the beginning of the process. Mm. Okay, Flavio. The we are in the middle. Are your territory, so it's all yours. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, first of all, welcome to everybody uh, for this uh, presence. And uh, I will try not uh, to bore too much uh, with this uh, flight uh, over the uh, portfolio of uh, my company. That is uh, the company Rossini. Uh, in the meantime, I, I think uh, that uh, everybody can see the, the slides uh, in uh, that uh, where we are talking on. Uh, Rossini is a, is a family company, Italian based. Uh, we are based in Milano. And uh, it's, uh, it's been founded uh, approximately one, uh, 100 years ago, 1928. We are now the third generation. And uh, the, for the picture you see on the right side uh, is Mr. Felice Rostini. He's in the company, is uh, one of the most important uh, engines uh, of our company, still active. Uh, and uh, he was the one who gave uh, the start uh, to the uh, internal, internal, internalization sorry, uh, of uh, our company, uh, bringing the speedwell sleeve uh, into the gravure and uh, in the lamination. We are now uh, present uh, in uh, all the uh, continents with eight factories and uh, related organization, of course, and also for uh, direct uh, sales uh, offices. This way we can uh, cover, or we try to cover in the best way, uh, the service, uh, the products, uh, all of what is uh, related to our uh, core business, which is the core business of Rossini. Uh, we do manufacture, uh, speedwell sleeves, uh, rubber rollers uh, for uh, the different application in the printing like uh, rotogravure, flexo printing, uh, uh, lamination, coating. And uh, in the flexo printing, uh, we have a wide range of uh, sleeves, plate sleeves, uh, and adapters. We will see later on uh, uh, this, uh, the, in details uh, these products. Of course, uh, since uh, 19. Uh, uh, 2019, we have founded a new uh, division of equipment and they are now available uh, for the market. We do uh, grinders, we do sleep storages, and we also do manufacture and distribute and serve uh, the cleaning device uh, for the central, uh, for the central flexo presses. Okay. Let's start uh, from the speedwell sleeve. Um, this product has been really the first uh, high-end uh, product uh, that gave to Rossini a very big uh, jump uh, to, uh, to the market. The speedwell sleeve is a taper sleeve uh, that allow uh, the fast change of the impression sleeve in the rotogravure printing. And uh, uh, we have uh, the complete range of uh, rubbers for the different applications that are needed into the gravure, but also we will see in the lamination in the, in, in the other process, uh, like a hot melt or, or 
whatever is uh, the application needed. Uh, this kind of compounds uh, is always available, available both in uh, speedwell sleep configuration and in uh, rubber rollers, steel rubber rollers. Let's start from the uh, most uh, relevant uh, uh, speedwell sleep that we distribute and manufacture. It is uh, the red ASA uh, in the rotogaver printing uh, with uh, electrostatic uh, print assist. Uh, this is quite important because this product is uh, uh, certified for uh, uh, use in uh, uh, explosive atmosphere. Uh, and uh, this is very good uh, for uh, printing uh, half roll tones with plastic film and lightweight uh, paper. Of course, we have also uh, for uh, other uh, films uh, for high grammature and uh, weigh, uh, high weight uh, paper. The ESO rubber is the Formula One. This is a carbon black based. And uh, we go also with the uh, uh, green, ESO green polyurethane uh, for printing uh, with the high uh, weight uh, paper, especially with uh, uh, water or alcohol based ink. Of course, rotogravure is not only is a system uh, uh, application, it's also standard print. And we have a wide range, complete range in the different harness for uh, uh, printing with uh, inks, uh, with acetate, acetate based ink, and uh, with water on alcohol based ink. Here we guarantee the maximum conductivity and we also have certification for food contact with dry food contact. We have also a special application, of course, uh, uh, for different uh, uh, specific uh, inks. In this case, uh, we can offer the Neopress B, and this is uh, with uh, uh, aliphatic solvents, or uh, the Neopress PU, this is for water. Uh, based solvents, uh, inks, sorry. And when you print a thin board, that means uh, you need a very high load uh, when, during the printing. Then we do also uh, the Viton. This is a special compound uh, for, uh, uh, in case uh, you use uh, Tolol or Xylol uh, in case of a release or uh, uh, adhesive tapes. Special recommendation, and uh, these are the recommendations that we normally apply, considering the different harness uh, that we can offer, we can offer for our compounds, our rubbers. You can here see a general uh, statement based on our experience, uh, but of course, each machine, each printer has its own experience, and. Uh, uh, you normally have to combine the real experience uh, with what is a theoretically uh, kind of uh, guidance. We said uh, rubber rollers, we said uh, speedwell sleeve for rotogravur, but also in the lamination and coating, speedwell sleeve have been applied uh, with success into the lamination and especially the polycoat G is quite well known in case of solventless lamination to components glues. Uh, this is uh, often used by most of the OEMs uh, dealing in this uh, specific field. Quite important the polycoat uh, because uh, uh, this is formulation has been tested and find it uh, uh, in order to have uh, the optimized uh, uniform layer of the glue, in order to avoid uh, an excess of deposition and related waste. So this is why you have uh, an economical benefit as well, not only for the absolute uniformity, but also for the right amount that you need uh, when the machine has been calibrated. Then we go to the hypalon. 
The Ipalon is also uh, very good, is a, absolutely a top level product in case of uh, solventless uh, monocomponent and also for high temperature applications. Then the Neoplus B, we have already known it uh, in the rotogravure. Here is used uh, normally as a nip roller into the different configuration of the machines. But of course, uh, it is not only solventless uh, delamination, it is also with solvent. And there we can offer the Neoflex C or the Neoflex G as uh, in the different application with the different uh, uh, solvents that you may use, water or uh, acetate solvent. Uh, those are different uh, and we have different products for covering this demand. The silicon A is also used for cold seal application or where you especially need the non-sticky uh, properties and especially for high temperature. Of course, uh, you can see that we have a, a complete uh, panorama of these rollers and a couple of things regarding uh, uh, how uh, should be better to handle it. What we do recommend, uh, we do recommend, uh, in example, a regular grinding, regular check of the surface. Uh, it's not only important uh, to use the right products, it's only important and basically uh, it's vital to keep the machine in a standard quality controlled uh, condition. This is why the regular grinding is necessary as and also the, uh, the undercuts or the steps are quite recommended. The regular grinding in order to guarantee the quality of the uniform deposition, the steps in order to have, uh, uh, to avoid, in example, uh, wrinkles that you see on the sides of the film may be due to the deposition of material on the sides. And this is why it's always uh, quite important to follow these two recommendations. Okay, now uh, let's move from rotogravure lamination to the flex of printing variable format. Here, Rossini can offer a really wide range of uh, products starting from the plate sleeves here okay i think everybody here knows uh what we are talking about but you know uh, the plate sleeve is assembled on a, a pneumatic mandor okay so uh you give air and the sleeve goes in of course this sleeve has to be prepared before with the plate here is the panorama of uh, uh, the product that we can offer, the solvent-based application. Uh, we offer the Everstata, is uh, absolutely uh, the most used sleeve uh, in case of uh, uh, our portfolio. And the Star Court. Star Court uh, is uh, the, the, the top line, is the top level, because uh, the sleeve is completely encapsulated into fiberglass, the sides, but also the top, and over the top, uh, only a three millimeter layer of uh, uh, special hard uh, polyurethane is applied. Uh, due to this configuration, uh, of course, we can offer also three years warranty on this product, and this is quite important. Uh, by the point of view of uh, the investment. Um, of course, uh, uh, the sleeves uh, are not consumable. Uh, these are mainly, uh, should be mainly considered as a capex, as a capital investment, because they can last absolutely a long time, okay? Uh, the Photoflex. The Photoflex uh, is a, a full-tone seamless uh, sleeve uh, to print, uh, full tone or varnish, uh, normally one color 
inside the, the, the range of six, eight, four colors that you are using. Solvent base, water base. Uh, a special mention from the, for the tin A. Tin A is also used uh, for the first repeats on uh, the solvent base application because this is a fiberglass. Uh, this is also used uh, for storing, in example, uh, the plate. Uh, is the only sleeve that has not uh, any specific problem if you want to store a, a kind of repetitive job uh, on it. All the others, uh, when you put to stock on the warehouse, uh, it's always better to dismount the tape and dismount the plate in order to keep the uh, exact uh, uniformity and uh, avoid uh, any kind of and it is used for water-based ink can be used also for solvent-based ink but honestly not uh, so much uh, uh, suggested by our side. The Photoflex sleeve, uh, same as uh, the other one. Uh, the other one is uh, static, so can discharge uh, the eventual charge, uh, electrostatic charge. This one can be used uh, for water-based printing. Plate sleeve, also adapters. Uh, the adapters are uh, uh, diameter adapters uh, in order to use uh, the sleeves uh, you see in the sketch on the side uh, that uh, uh, in order to have a, a big uh, you can have a big sleeve with high thickness or to handle with the carrier and smaller size sleeves you can optimize the cost of the sleeves you can also have a faster machine setup in example, you can manage the production in order to have the same carrier with different repeats that you can mount on these carriers. And these allow you to use uh, lightweight uh, sleeves uh, with less cost uh, and easy to handle. Here, Rossini can offer different uh, uh, type uh, of products. The standard carrier that is a uh, uh, a kind of uh, special sleeve uh, with carbon fiber coating on top, on the sides. Uh, normally it is, uh, let's say, considered for use uh, to low speed, but this is much more related uh, to which kind of printing uh, you are dealing with and which kind of uh, plate you are using. So it is not exactly right to mention the speed. It's much more important to see the complete balancement of, uh, the, of the production process. Of course, uh, it's a different story if you go on the Carbo Bridge. Carbo Bridge uh, is absolutely indicated for the wide web and uh, big repeats because uh, of uh, the lightweight, compared to the carrier, the standard carrier, especially when you go again on the wide web. And uh, when you have, uh, uh, when you are printing in high speed and demanding job, which is the big difference. Here you have a tube that is carbon fiber made, high modulus carbon fiber made. And this carbon fiber tube is completely manufactured in Rossini. Rossini can offer to you the complete inch assurance that the warranty is given by Rossini 360 degrees on all our products. Last but not least, fast bridge. Here, uh, this is the evolution of our carbo bridge. Uh, can allow to you a fastest, the fastest uh, uh, bouncing uh, uh, effect in case when you print a, a very demanding job at high speed here you can reach really higher productivity even compared to the one 
that we mentioned before, CarboBridge. Why? Because uh, we have worked on the angles and uh, the type of carbon fibers uh, used to manufacture the tube. This is quite important. Of course, uh, these are uh, products uh, of very, very high levels. Okay. Why the bouncing? The bouncing must be taken under control because uh, you know better than me, it generates a missing printing area. So you are forced uh, to lower the production speed. And this is what we don't want, okay? Depending on the application, of course, there are many other, many opportunities. Carbon bridge, fast bridge. Printing is okay, is absolutely the most important part of your work, but keeping the warehousing in the right condition and is as well important. So we recommend always to put sleeve adapters, also the speedwell sleeve that we mentioned before, in vertical position, not horizontal, not laid down on the floor, and if it is possible, in a safe environment. This is why we offer also in our products uh, the sleep storage system. Another protection is the Anilox protection tube. I'm mentioning it uh, now in the Flexo because uh, a lot of time uh, you damage the sleeve, the, the Anilox sleeve uh, into the handling process. It can fall down uh, when you are cleaning. So this product can allow you to be mounted when you take out from the warehouse and you can dismount it uh, when the, when the analogs is inside the machine. So it will be a safe protection all along the time that you are not using for printing. We fly over this, uh, Rossini makes uh, sleeves, uh, but uh, uh, since the beginning, we also produce uh, the mandrels. So steel mandrels for the tapered uh, sleep, speedwell sleeve, uh, according to our patent. The anti-deflection for high level uh, load, the parallel uh, pneumatic mandrel, or the mandrel where you need to cool down, so you need a, a water circuit in the, all the different configuration. So sleeve, rubbers, but also steel. And last but not least, carbon fiber mandrels. Uh, using our experience uh, with the carbon fiber, we are now in the market since some years uh, with the mandrels for the different machine. Basically, we can offer what you need uh, on this kind of uh, portfolio. We said at the beginning, uh, the equipment. Uh, today we present uh, these three products quite fast. Uh, the Prima. The Prima is a grinder that uh, we, let's say, need uh, to maintain uh, uh, the rubber into perfect condition. You need a regular grinding, you need a regular uh, maintenance of all your rubber roller and speed of sleep. Um, which is the difference? With this product, we, you can place uh, the rubber uh, roller or the speed of sleep in place into the machine and you can do uh, the turning before and the final grinding. You have two tools uh, in one machine. In this way, you have no problem of doing one operation on one machine and the second operation in the other machine with related problem of eccentricity or not perfect uh, work. The sleeve storage we mentioned before is important to work uh, uh, with the sleeve. It is also important to maintain in a safe environment uh, the sleeve as well. The CI drum cleaner, 
evolution. Most of the machine uh, are uh, cleaned by hand. You should understand that when you clean by hand, uh, the machine is standing, it doesn't print. With the Evolution's cleaning system is an automatic device that in few minutes, five to 10 minutes maximum, uh, can clean or can prepare your CI ready for cleaning. This is why you can recover time, uh, improve the efficiency of your machine. Consider that you are doing some color preparation, plate adjustment, uh, material preparation. In the same time, you can have the CI clean. In three cycle distributing in the day, five minutes of use of the system, you can save hour, production hours. And this is why uh, in the last uh, uh, years, we have now around about 250 system runnings. Uh, and the, the, this system has been introduced in the market in a couple of years, in the last two years, let's say deeply. Uh, quite reliable, low maintenance. It's not maintenance free, nothing is maintenance free, but really low maintenance. Uh, I'm responsible for this, so I know it very well. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that I have spent my time. And uh, last but not least, I leave the last message. Uh, we have our local contact, uh, is uh, the unique sales corporation, Mr. Umair, that is also in the meeting. Uh, of course, here under you can see my contact. And we are open to uh, answer maybe more detailed, also in a separate communication, as you like. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your presence. I think I can leave to Dominic <laughs> the ball. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Flavio. Actually, also for my my uh, knowledge, it was very, very informative Dominic, sorry, I... and very interesting. Um, okay. So um, I will also start now and today we talk about uh, the company Rinsman and specifically about uh, solvent recovery. Yeah. Hello. Yes. You hear me? Okay. Everybody hear me? Yes, yes, Mr. Dominic, we can hear you. You can continue. Okay, fantastic. So let's talk about uh, specifically about distillation and a little bit about Rensman. What are we doing? Where are we located? And uh, a few uh, facts. So Rensman has been founded in 1969 and was at that time the first company in Europe which offered solvent washing and solvent recovery systems. We are a global technical leader and have more than 2,000 machines around the world. Currently we have 110 employees, uh, proven technologies, an own R&D center, a worldwide service network, and everything is made in Germany here in Monsingen, which is a very nice uh, area uh, here in Germany. It's quite mountainous and for some people who like to drink white wine, it's quite famous for the white wine here. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the distillation process? The distillation process is used in the chemical industry, uh, printing, um, paints, uh, lacquer industry, some of our plants are even running in the pharmacy industry. Yeah? So with distillation, we separate two or more liquids from solids by means of heat. It's we, three take difference, we take a difference between uh, heterogeneous mixtures, substances which are direct identifiable, and we talk about homogeneous mixtures, substances you can visually not differentiate. 
So heterogeneous mixtures are usually separated by means of filtration, right? You have a filtration medium with different pore sizes so that particles are not able to pass through these filters, right? In a homogeneous mixture, we separate mainly by distillation process. The distillation process is happening in four time periods. One is heating up the solvent and heating medium until boiling point is reached. Secondary, vaporization of the liquid. Third would be the condensing vapor resulting in clean solvent liquid. The fourth will be distilled down process to get the solvent less residue. Uh, so you have more the solids left over, yeah, which are then cheaper to uh, discharge, less amount, um, not so hazardous as previously. Why are these important? Uh, uh, why is it important to know? We need to know yeah, that we calculate the output rate. That means the average output rate per hour. So if a customer comes to us and asks us, hey, can you offer us a distillation unit? The first thing we ask is what type of solvents are they? Which ratio? And what, are, uh, what is the solid content in percentage? So now comes a little movie uh, about how the distillation process works with our machinery. So first is filling up the distillation unit with a used solvent and the filling continues until the boiler content reach a present weight. Yeah, we have in some machinery, we have load cells. So then we start rotating the mixture and starting heating it. Yeah. So slowly, we cannot heat up very quick because that might can then result in a, in a big burst. So we heat up slowly until we reach the distillation point or the, the boiling point of the solvent. Under vacuum, the distillation temperature is about 30 to 40 degrees lower than the uh, natural under atmospheric pressure. So this means we have a better efficiency and we have more security. So you can see in the video that bubbles coming up and the vapor is going through the condenser. Yeah. So it heats up, and then the vapor goes into the condenser. There, the steam condenses, and the resulting distillate flows into the distillate container. When you see we have a concave dome. That is important because um, during distillation, you create foam and we don't want to track the foam into the clean solvent. So with our machinery, we can assure and with a setup of filters, we make sure that the clean solvent has a high purity. So, and we continue filling up the boiling and the process heats continuously keeps going until we reach the high level in the distillate tank. And then we start the so-called distill down process. We, when the flow meter does not detect enough solvent coming into the distillate tank anymore, then we go into the distill down uh, process. That means the sludge, what is collected in the boiling tank will be reduced to a large extent out of solvent. So we get more a solid mess. So as you see in the right hand side, that's how it looks like. It looks like in a bakery. Yeah? It's a very uh, slurry consistency. Once we reach that, then the end of distillation takes place. We cool down a little bit and open the valve and discharge the solid content in a, in a button here below, yeah? in a container here below. That container can then be removed when it's full and given to an external discharge. So how does the um, our eye looks like or the coast? Before the Corona time here in Europe, we paid about one, $1.10 for a kilo of ethanol, right? 
So we get uh, the recovery uh, uh, capacity utilization of 88% and a recovery rate of up to almost 98% of pure solvent yeah, with high grade quality. So at that time, when the solvent price was quite low, we have usually um, an RI below two years, yeah, before Corona. During Corona, because of the usage of high, high amounts of disinfection and so on and so on, and a couple of companies started getting panicking and panicked, uh, made panic buys of uh, solvents, the price increased up to three, $3.20 per kilogram and currently is at $2.20 per kilogram. All the data are the same. That means the capacity utilization is 88%, the recovery rate at 97.7%. And just by increasing solvent prices, the, uh, the RI dropped below one year. So in, when you distillate your solvents, okay, you need to consider all the cost factors. That means when you wash your print parts or you wash your vessels in the paint and ink industry, usually you do that with solvents which you have to buy. Using a distillation process, especially a high efficiency process, allows you to recycle your solvents. That means your, your consumption of fresh solvents goes almost in, uh, um, I would say, about 90% reduction of cost. Then you reduce also your uh, external discharge costs, yeah, because you don't have to get a company who picks up the waste solvent, brings it over there and dump it somewhere, or uh, external companies which are um, specialized in um, shop shops, yeah, they, they can distill your solvent, but you don't get it purified back. So you have to pay for the distillation process. You have to pay to bring it back. And you are not sure because they serve many other customers how pure your solvent will be when you receive it back, okay? We need to talk about the volumes, yeah? We always need to know, okay, what are your volumes? What is, um, what is your total, what you need per day, yeah? And this makes it quite special that you cannot compare us with competitor machinery. The reasons are the competitors don't have a dome to provide extra room for possible foaming. So that means the purity of the solvent decreases. Some competitors using conical shape of the uh, boiling room, reduction of heating surface, small outlet for solid waste, which results in blockage and overcooking. Yeah, so that can be quite um, nasty then to clean up. Heating is not uniform, therefore you have a huge energy loss and resulting in higher energy costs. Um, constant output, yeah? we, for us it's very important that you have an easy operation and very, very low maintenance, yeah? because this is usually the, the highest cost factor. Yeah? And additionally, we here at Rensmann um, really take care of, of international safety, health and environment uh, regulations. Yeah? Therefore, we also serve a wide range of customers, um, worldwide uh, huge customers like Axel Mobil, yeah? we have exclusive contracts, SIG Combi Block, we have exclusive contracts with Tetra Pak, yeah? Where, because they know how safe our machinery are and that all of our components are actually uh, ATEX certified and X-proofed, yeah, and also to international standards. Mm. So that which will minimize the output. You see here the cooking field, yeah? you have a big one, a combination of two small ones and uh, a medium one and a smaller one, right? Which is more density, with more density here. So this is actually what we use, yeah? We have a higher density, a flat bottom. Yeah? Um, as I explained before, many competitors, they have a conical shape. And in, from the technical point of view, uh, this is not very, um, not very efficient, uh, high efficiency. Yeah?
foaming is a big subject, you know, um, because it really can mess up your the purity of the solvent. You know? and, um, and we want to avoid to contaminate the solvent with some mineral oil-based uh, um, uh, um, deforming agents and so on. Yeah. So that is how foaming looks like during the distillation process. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a few facts what we need um, in order that you can get a quote from us. We need to know the kind of solvent, the ratio. We will then determine, is it a low or high boiling solvent? Um, we, uh, to get an economical output rate, the heating temperature has to be 35 degrees higher than the temperature of the solvent boiling point. You know? Under vacuum, this is not valid anymore. This is why we use vacuum actually. The solid content in uh, weight percentage, operational hours or weeks per annum, amount of waste to be distilled per annum, and does the waste contain, contains catalysts such as nitrocellulose, PVC, or furans? Yeah, in case of nitrocellulose or furans, what can happen um, after the distillation process, especially when it's um, when it when the waste get discharged, it can react with the oxygen from the air and can cause exothermic reactions. In case of PVC, um, there is chloride um, development. So that means we have to change the, the steel type. Yeah? So that means we have to use a higher grade of stainless steel in order to avoid any corrosion. Yeah. Here we see, for example, um, the boiling temperatures of water, the difference and the heating temperature. Right, this is just the heating temperature, mm -hmm. but the boiling temperature under vacuum is actually 35 to 40 degrees, mm -hmm. very, very low. Mm -hmm. Our machinery, uh, you as a customer, can define what kind of um, energies you want to use to heat up. Mm -hmm. you, we can use electrical immersion heaters. We can use thermal oil or steam net networks. We can use hot water to prepare ethyl acetate alcohol in the printing industry. Um, so that means if you have an extruder line and you have a, a hot water coming out from the cooling, etc., we can reuse that one actually in our distillation plant. So that means your uh, energy balance for the company is also improving. You know? Cooling water. Uh, we need, of course, uh, because we have to compensate the steam. You know? um, and that's it pretty much. So now I introduce you to a few products from us. Um, first, we start with our smallest one and the more, most economical one, which is the DV, DW50 and the DW100. Yeah? The DW50 makes about 50 liter an hour, the DW100 about 100 liter per hour. Both are with uh, 4.5, one is with 4.5 kilowatt, the other with 9 kilowatt. Um, they have uh, immersion heaters with uh, term, uh, thermal oil. Um, the cleaning of the distillation van, uh, vessel is carried out manually through a manhole. Yeah? And here we can treat uh, up to a solid content of about 8%. Then we have the middle size distillation units, which is the type M200 and the M400. We have a polygon, uh, polygonal distillation boiler. The filling value is between 200 and 400 liters, and the power is between 9 kilowatts to 18 kilowatts. Also here, the cleaning of distillation vessel is carried out manually. Here we can treat solid contents up to 12%. Then we have distillation units with uh, scraper systems, starting with a more economical system, which is type Roto. It's a cylindrical distillation boiler provided with an integrated scraper system to ensure an optimum heat transfer. Yeah? So we have a flat bottom and scrapers continuously cleaning the bottom. And therefore we get an excellent heat transfer and a high recovery rate. Yeah? Discharging residue automatically with help of a discharge valve at the bottom, which is quite big. 
ja, uh, it's a DN200, that's a 200 millimeter diameter. The competitors have 100 millimeter, but they have also quite a lot of issues with blockage. Yeah, we don't have that. Here, actually, you can uh, treat uh, solvents with a solid content up to 40%. So, highly contaminated um, solvents. So, we have three sizes on the Roton uh, series. We have the 9, 12, and 18. All of them are Siemens SPS with automatically refilling and distilled down process. And it's time controlled. Uh, they also can equip with automatic discharge um, as well as uh, remote access. That means if you have a technical problem, our software engineers can, or application engineers can actually log in to your system and guide you through um, um, to find the fault of the machine. Yeah. The filling volume for the Roto 9 is uh, 140 liters. The filling volume for the rotor 12 is 250 liters and for the rotor 18, 400 liters. So it's very high capacity. Mm. Then we have um, the Rotomax E series. E stands for economic. This is actually the Rotomax is our most advanced technology what we have. And we have two versions. One is the econo economic version and the other is the fully yeah, the fully equipped high high tech um, yeah machine yeah to say so. Also here, uh, Siemens Siemens is standard for us with automatic refilling and distilled drum process time controlled. We have load cells uh, measuring the filling level. Yeah, so the other machines work over a timer for the filling level. Here we have load cells. They actually measure the weight of the vessel and what's flowing into it. Yeah? And it's upgradable with two more load cells yeah, that for the automatic distillation. That means you have on the bottom also um, load cells for the waste, also for the solid waste. And uh, when the system recognizes uh, through the weight that the uh, discharge container is full, it will stop the distillation process and gives you an acoustic signal in order to change the, the container underneath. You know? And um, and last but not least, we have then the most advanced one, uh, which is uh, very, very technical, has a lot of safety features, is fully automatic. You know, so that machine can run 724 without any operator. Um, um, has the full software range. That means you even get evaluation data of your distillation process, see, okay, how it's performing. And also here you can, um, treat uh, very highly contaminated solvents. So here we have uh, two load cell systems guaranteeing an automatically working system. Yeah, we have one on for the vessel, one on the bottom, uh, and they always communicate to each other. And therefore we know exactly what is the efficiency. Yeah? The possible upgrades what we still have is the mechanical clean out of residue. That means we have in the outlet button an additional agitator to make sure that the drain is completely empty and clean, so there is no um, incrustation or uh, some other waste adhering. And we can place that type of machine into a non-X room. Yeah, so you can put it beside your print press. That's not a problem. Yeah. Here you see some example installations we have around the world. Uh, here you see the buffer containers distillation unit which is uh, Rotomax 30, the bypass level indicators, you know, the floor pan in case if you should have um, if you should have um, a leak and then down there is a 1000 liter uh, container for the solid discharge. You know. We also offer the Rotomax units um, in order for um, dis distilling water or wastewater. Yeah? So we offer our washing machines which are using um, detergents to clean, um, to clean cylinders or print press parts or flexoblade parts or flexo sleeves or uh, cylinder rollers and so on. Yeah? In order to treat that wastewater, we also have uh, distillation units specifically for the water treatment. 
uh, and the board are recycling. So that's pretty much it from my part. Um, our local contact is Unique Sales, Mr. Uh, Umer. Um, and he will, he can provide you with much more information, get in touch with us. Yeah, uh, we even can make individual um, webinars yeah, if there is some further interest where we can discuss more technical details. And um, yes, um, solvent distillation is a good thing. It saves a lot of costs, uh, discharge costs as well as operational costs and um, also has a good environmental impact. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Flavio. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, both of you are masters in your fields. And uh, let's have a look at the question and answer uh, that we have received in the section. Um, Okay, uh, how to get pure ethanol? How do I control distillation? I think, Dominic, this is handled. That's your handle. Can you answer that, please? Um, where is that? Uh, how to get pure ethanol and how to control distillation? Well, the, the pure ethanol, I mean, you have your, your, your ink waste or whatsoever, and you have different boiling points as well, right? So that means that the alcohol will, will vaporize, condense and collect it. That's all how it works, yeah? So, um, and, excuse me. Um, that means that um, the control of the distillation unit is, is semi-automatic. It de depends what technology you're using, right? So if it's the economic versions, the smaller versions, yeah, then it's managed by a timer, yeah, a simple timer, which uh, an operator who, who has to be on standby to look, okay, ah, now I'm finished with my distillation process and I have to make the distill drying. Yeah. In the more advanced technologies, what we have, the Roto series and the Roto Max series, this process can be completely automized. That means you get a constant output on the purity of the solvent itself. So let's question one. Then we have a lot of solvent based questions. So, Flavio, can you, I mean, uh, Dominic, can you address the others there too, please? What is the future of sustainability when it comes to the industry? How we can we adapt in Asian countries? Yes. Sustainability is a huge um, subject for everybody uh, in the in any industry, actually. Yeah. Um, sustainability can only be managed when providers or providers of machinery of processes, as well as consumers, are getting trained in appreciating recycling process, appreciating the resources what we have. And this is a long way we all have to go, not just in Asia, in Europe, in America, in South America. Yeah, I call it always that's teamwork, that we have a sustainable future. Yeah, We at Rensman, of course, with our machinery and the possibility of uh, uh, solvent recovery and, and all the waste recovery, taking part of that sustainability for each and every one. But still, the solid waste still needs to be properly discharged and properly recycled. Okay, when, uh, when we see it from our side, uh, of course, uh, sustainability declines uh, over to prepare products uh, that can uh, last longer, so have a longer lifetime and uh, to be as close as possible to uh, the market, to our customers, uh, in terms of uh, service and delivery. You know, the carbon footprint is also related to the distance uh, that you need to cover uh, the market. Uh, in Rossini, we have this um, opportunity to have uh, uh, eight factories 
Uh, all of them are linked uh, on a common software platform, uh, both for uh, handling the orders and the production system, of course. And uh, this is why we are looking to uh, reduce as much as possible uh, this carbon footprint of our factory. Okay, great. Uh, there is one interesting question. Uh, what is the future of sustainability when it comes to the industry? How can we adapt it in Asian countries that we talked about? How can I remove solvent from my product? Uh, that I don't think is uh, something that either of these two panelists can answer. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, we, talk, we talk about retardation process, so this is not um, the most, yeah. No, let's yeah, say okay. that. Uh, Conventional versus cryogenic distillation efficiency, which is preferred? Cryo, cryogenic distillation. Uh, frankly spoken, let me Google it, but uh, in our industry, we don't have uh, cryo, cryo, whatever uh, thing, so that uh, is nonsense. But maybe, Dominic, uh, you can look into it and answer these, some of these questions, and Fabio, to uh, look into it and answer some of the questions by the attendees of this webinar who've taken the time off to attend it. Uh, Flavio, it was very interesting to learn about rollers and the type of rollers and sleeves there are. Tell me one thing, how much of it is there, how, how much of your product is being used in Pakistan at the present moment in time? Uh, look, uh, uh, in reality, uh, I don't know how much, uh, at the moment I have not the, the latest figures. Uh, we are operating uh, since some years uh, in Pakistan uh, with the main uh, producers uh, of uh, printing, uh, flexible printing or flexible packaging printing. And uh, we are glad to have uh, one of the, one, uh, all the most uh, relevant uh, companies uh, uh, of Pakistan. Of course, is, uh, through, through the, the local organization that we have over there. Last year, I got the opportunity to be in Pakistan for the first time uh, at, at the show. And I was supposed to be there also this year and to cover <laughs> more meetings. Uh, this is also a good opportunity to, to talk uh, with everybody and uh, at least to refresh uh, what uh, they already know because they have already long-term experience uh, with our products in Pakistan, uh, but also uh, maybe to, to have the opportunity to talk uh, uh, with the new potential customers uh, uh, in order to let them understand that we have a, a wide range, not only what they exactly they know. Uh, if we come back in a moment on the, on the, the point of uh, uh, the future of uh, uh, the factories, uh, the companies, uh, I think that the automatization uh, will enter more and more inside the different uh, uh, productions. And there we need to balance in the best way, I think, uh, the use of the material. I agree that, uh, an example, water-based inks uh, uh, should be the, the best uh, or uh, the uh, target to be used. Uh, of course, also the different process, uh, uh, our devices, uh, uh, they must uh, go uh, following the same evolution steps. Uh, but again, I think uh, uh, that uh, the people is the key. Okay, great. Uh, Dominique, uh, I believe yes. you've got a footprint in Pakistan already with quite a few major companies, am I correct? Yes, we do. We actually do uh, with uh, two very successful installations and uh, they're running very well uh, with our washing as well with our solvent recovery systems. So Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Amir bin Munia asked from uh, Texopoly industry ask a question, which is quite interesting. What are the capacities of these recovery units? I mean, in an hour, how much quantity we can get? There is no limit. Yeah, you tell me what you need. I bring you the solution. Yeah, so that means we offer you the right solution. We have customers. Yeah, they make in one hour they make up to one ton of solvent recovery. Yeah. 
We have customers, they only need 20 liter per, per hour. Yeah. So you come up with your specification. We will discuss it internally with our engineers and application engineers, and then we come back to you with the most suitable solution. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Shoi Ahmad Bilal had a question about what about a recycle of epoxy and polyurethane paint? Actually, uh, we do that quite a lot um, um, for cleaning purposes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we do that. Yeah. Here we have then a special feature uh, when we have polyurethane paints, yeah, we have an, uh, a special technology to avoid exothermic reactions. Okay, uh, Flavio, there's a question. Yes, I saw, I saw the question uh, related to the roller. Um, well, uh, it's difficult to predict uh, with a formula the hardness uh, after one year because it depends on the load that you have applied on the rubber. It depends on the size of the uh, material that you have uh, used and the substrate. So the general conditions uh, of the printing or lamination, uh, they influence uh, quite a lot uh, and the handling. So the cleaning of the material, if it has been done with the correct products or not. In general, you see an increase of this uh, hardness, but it's not predictable. But this is also why we recommend uh, uh, on a yearly basis, at least, uh, the grinding uh, on the upper surface. So you remove uh, something like uh, three millimeters, in example, uh, of layer of the external layer in order to get uh, the same performance that you have at the beginning. Because one of the most important points, when you talk about uh, 60, uh, 65, 70, 80 uh, degree shore A, or whatever it is, the hardness, this hardness of the compound uh, is uh, in the compound. That means from the top to the core. So this is why the correct maintenance of a rubber roller foreseen also a yearly based uh, grinding and maintenance. There's one more question for you, the next one. What? Uh, Particles of ink you recommend for sleeve? I don't understand. Uh, you can request Dr. Shoel and Bilal to uh, communicate with you an email so that uh, you know uh, both of us, both of you can then uh, exchange uh, thoughts on these questions. I think we should handle it that way, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, thank you very, very much for giving your precious time. Uh, two very salient companies uh, operating in the Asia region, Benzman and Rossini. It was a great pleasure hosting you in this webinar, and we wish you all the very best in light of this pandemic. I hope we can all recover and bounce back. All the very best. Uh, thank you very much. To them. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. And uh, please, everybody, stay healthy. Yeah. And uh, we are here at your services. Okay. Thank you very All much okay. from our Thank side, you. of course. Everybody, thank you very much for attending this webinar, which was hosted by FACT. We at the German Pakistan Chamber of Commerce and Industry took great pleasure in moderating it on behalf of FACT. And we want to help promote all German companies and its European counterparts in Pakistan and achieve proper bilateral trade between the two countries. Thank you very much for attending. All the best. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.